So what if I told you that you could get the power of a DSLR camera, but in a small compact body? The M6 Mark II features the highest resolution APS-C sensor on the market today. But when you cram this much power into a small mirrorless body, you start to run into problems. So let's do a deep dive and figure out how does this camera stack up to the bigger, bulkier DSLRs, but more importantly, how does this stack up to the cheaper and more popular Sony cameras? Let's get into it. By the way, if you're new to the channel, we talk about anything and everything to do with camera gear, including teaching you guys how to take better photos and videos. So if you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe to see more of our content. But most importantly, I'm gonna leave links in the description down below for the most up-to-date pricing on the camera gear that we talk about today. So be sure to check that out and let's get into the video. The M6 Mark II is almost perfect with a few small flaws. These might be deal breakers that might make you wanna get a DSLR instead, or maybe you won't care. Let's find out. There's four main things that we have to look at here. Sensor, shooting speed, video frame rate, and design. And design is where I think this camera really struggles. Like I said earlier, you can't put this much horsepower into such a tiny camera without there being a trade-off. The M6 Mark II is really the Canon 90D. It has a 32 megapixel APS-C size sensor, which is the highest resolution APS-C sensor on the market. Now, if you wanted this much resolution in your camera, you would normally have to jump to a 5D Mark IV or an A7R4, which is $2,500, while the M6 Mark II comes in under $1,000. But with the lens, it's just about $1,000. That's probably not what most people consider cheap, but considering what else is out there, this is a pretty good deal. Now, one thing that you have to keep in mind, Canon realizes this, so these prices will change all the time. After this video's come out, most likely the price will go down. So if you wanna make sure you get the most up-to-date pricing, make sure to stay up-to-date with the links in the description to make sure you get the best pricing possible. Now, a quick side note that really only applies to professional. This camera has what is known as an EFM mount, and these lenses really are not good enough to resolve the 32 megapixel sensor. So if you plan on utilizing this sensor to the most, I do recommend picking up a professional Canon L-series lens or a Sigma lens, which is going to give you much better results than the EFM lenses. And speaking of lenses, how are the photos from this camera? Honestly, you can shoot sports, wildlife, parties, adventures, travel, even street photography. This camera can honestly shoot it all. The M6 Mark II is actually much faster than its competition. It shoots a ridiculous 14 frames per second in 14-bit RAW with continuous autofocus. And I know what you're thinking, that sounds way too good to be true. And honestly, it is. Unfortunately, the autofocusing system is simply not fast enough. 95% of your images will be in focus, but it's definitely going to miss a few shots. And for that reason, shooting in 14 frames per second really isn't worth it. It's really going to give you the best results possible at 10 frames per second. Now at 10 frames per second, that's pretty much what all the competition does. So the 14 frames per second in this camera doesn't really matter now, does it? Sony cameras like the a6400 or the ZV-E10 shoot 11 frames per second and the autofocusing system is much more reliable. And the Canon 90D, which is the DSLR equivalent of the M6, does 10 frames per second and pretty much gives you the same performance. So you're really not benefiting by switching over to a mirrorless apart from the size. So the M6 Mark II really isn't all that special when it comes to photos, but it's a whole different story when it comes to video. I do have a confession. I still had a blast using this camera on my daily morning walks whenever I'm trying to find inspiration or ideas for new video projects. And honestly, some of my best ideas came while using this camera. You know those times when you're so into what you're doing that you can't think about anything else? The kind of days where you finish your work without even looking up once. How would you like to feel that kind of focus every day? With Alpha Brain, you can. It's clinically studied nootropic ingredients support memory, mental speed, and flow state. That feeling of being in the zone. So you can be focused and productive anytime. It's a world-renowned nootropic supplement with more than a million bottles sold. 
With its trademark ingredients blend, Alpha Brain helps build an environment so that your brain can fire on all cylinders, promoting long lasting mental clarity. You can try them today for absolutely free by using the link in the description down below, or you can use the code RIVER for 10% off. So let's jump right back into this camera. Video is where this camera really shines, and chances are it's probably what you are the most interested in. So the first thing that really shocked me about this camera was that it did 4K without a crop. And you might be like, but bro, Sony does 4K uncropped, what's the big deal? For years and years, Canon would always crop their 4K video images even if it was on their four or $5,000 professional camera. Also, in 4K mode, the autofocus would slow down drastically. Basically, you would never get a Canon camera for 4K video. But that all changes with the M6 Mark II. This camera does 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second uncropped. Also, it does full HD up to 60 frames per second. Plus, it has a slow motion mode for 120 frames per second, but that mode does not have sound or autofocus. Now, something worth mentioning is that the Sony cameras do have the ability to record 120 frames per second with sound and autofocus, in case anyone cares. And speaking of autofocus, the M6 Mark II has dual pixel autofocus, which more than keeps up in both 4K and HD. It's very fast and extremely reliable. Now, personally, I do think Sony has faster and more reliable autofocus when compared to Canon in both photos and video, unless you're a professional, you really won't notice. The real reason to get a Canon camera is really the color science. Canon cameras without a doubt have the best color science. Your colors are going to look fantastic right out of the camera without any editing. And you're going to see the biggest difference when it comes to skin tones and faces. Canon cameras make skin look great, the colors in your skin will look lively and red, and overall, people just in general look more attractive. When you compare that to a Sony camera, your skin looks a little pale, the colors are kind of washed out, and generally, you need to do quite a bit of editing to look anywhere as good as a Canon camera. But the Sony cameras like the A6400 and the Sony ZV-E10, while it's a long name, do have cinema profiles like the S-Log2, S-Log3, and HLG built right into the camera. So arguably, even though the in-camera colors are not that great, you could color grade that footage to look better than the Canon cameras. But if you're shooting yourself for YouTube, weddings, vlogging, something where you don't have a lot of time to color grade the image, I definitely think you're going to get a better image and an overall better experience with the Canon camera purely based on image quality. The person that I would really recommend the M6 to is someone that wants to take their photos and video skills to the next level. And if that sounds like you and you wanna learn how to shoot better photos and videos today, I've put together a free training of seven simple secrets that will take your photos and videos from looking like this to this. I highly recommend checking them out in the link down below. These simple secrets include things like lens choices, frame rates, and camera angles. I'm going to show you how to get the most out of the gear that you're using right now, even if that gear is a smartphone. I included a link in the description below to the 100% free training, so make sure to check that out. My biggest fear with the M6 was that I knew this camera was going to have to sacrifice design in some way to cram everything in here. So, as far as the user experience goes, it's actually really good. I honestly thought it was gonna be terrible, but it's great. There's a scroll wheel, the buttons are all in really good place. There's a front dial and a back dial for shutter and aperture. And in terms of usability, if you're not trying to be like, I need this to feel like a DSLR, this camera feels really, really good in my hands, but... This camera does not have an optical viewfinder. To get an optical viewfinder, you actually have to attach it at the top, which suddenly doesn't make this camera seem very small. And on top of that, if you want to use an optical viewfinder, you can no longer attach a flash unit to this camera. Although this camera does have a built-in flash, but if you want to add an external flash, it's no longer possible. The real major design problem with this camera comes in three parts. One, the grip is really small. It honestly feels anemic in my hands, and a lot of times I'm just like, man, this is a flimsy camera. Second, the screen on the back, while it tilts out, it tilts up as well. And if you have the optical viewfinder, you can no longer have the screen tilt up. Chances are, if you're using the optical viewfinder, you probably don't need to tilt the screen up to see yourself, but 
It's just a design flaw that I think Canon could have avoided. Now, the screen that I would have liked to see is that on the Sony ZV-E10, which actually comes out to the side, but this camera does not have an optical viewfinder either. So perhaps there's a design limitation somewhere where you can't have an optical viewfinder and a screen that flips out to the side in a camera. Because even Sony cameras that do have an optical viewfinder like the Sony a6400 or the a6600 still have flip up screens that come up to the top. I think this really comes down to a personal opinion. Let me know in the comments down below, do you like this design or would you prefer a built in viewfinder? And the last thing that I think Canon really dropped the ball on is that the battery life in this camera is really not that great. I really hoped that it would be good. I did several tests with this camera. And unfortunately in 4K mode especially, this battery is maybe an hour, hour and a half at the most. It's about as good as a Sony battery, but at least the Sony cameras have a nicer grip. So what's the verdict on the M6 Mark II? Well, this camera makes sense for two types of users. The first kind is the vlogger. If you want uncropped 4K and you want those phenomenal Canon colors and you want to vlog with this camera, this camera is going to do a great job and really keep up with all the demanding vlogging you want to do with it. But the second kind, and this is probably the kind of person that's going to buy this camera, that is somebody that really wants to take their photos and videos to the next level. This is going to give you a 32 megapixel sensor. And even though it's not going to shoot faster in some ways than a Sony camera, and it does cost a bit more, I think that 32 megapixel sensor is going to do a lot for you. It's going to give you more resolution in your photos and it's also going to give you a sharper image in your 4K and your HD, simply because you have a high resolution sensor and you have more data points in your video. With that being said, I think the M6 Mark II is an amazing camera for vloggers and video makers specifically. If you plan on picking up this camera, make sure to check out the link in the description down below for the most up-to-date and the best pricing possible. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video and make sure to check out the free training to take your videos and photos to the next level. Peace.